<laughs> Man, I got a fist bump from the Winfield Powers. What the fuck is this shit? This is not Steel Battalion. This is Steel Battalion. Not this! Oh my god, stop it. Oh my god, but I'm not even fucking moving. Do you see this? I'm not moving. This! The old Steel Battalion has you holding a controller with tons of buttons, gadgets, and levers. It made you feel like a badass. Hey, I got a great idea. Why don't we take Steel Battalion, get rid of that fucking controller, and give you this? You don't build your game around an inferior, inaccurate, motion sensing technology that only works when it decides it wants to. Especially when your game is so dependent on precise maneuvers. They should have renamed this game Steel Battalion. Get your fucking hand off that! In this game, you get surrounded by mechs. Every time you get hit, you get knocked off your viewpoint, forcing you to reposition. Then you have precious seconds while your cabin fills up with smoke to make a few precise maneuvers to vent the cabin, but pulling the right lever in time. And when you do this, your guy's freaking out. He's pressing every button, grabbing every unit in the god cabin, except for the one that you want. These would have been great fucking ideas had you had buttons for them. Buttons. Instead, you have the Connect. Only on Connect for Xbox 360. But no, you took one of my favorite franchises and you fed it up, Connect. I'm done. I'm done with your shit. Hey, come on, partner. Punch his ass out. Ooh. Hey. Hey, what was that for? Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure some of you out there saying, I don't know what you're talking about, it works fine. Fine! Maybe you did get it to work better than the majority of us. Maybe you did get it to function without tearing your fucking hair out. But for the majority of us, nine times out of 10, the Connect is gonna fight you when you least expect it. And 10 times out of 10, you will have issues of some sort. And that is not acceptable. Why do we keep forgiving this kind of crap from Connect games? At this point, we need to stop doing that. It's been more than a year for Connect. Unacceptable. It's sad. It's sad, really, because this was supposed to be the first game for the hardcore players, the core gamer, combining both the controller and the Connect, playing up to each other's strengths. On paper, this sounded so good. I wanted for somebody to do this exact thing, but in execution, it failed horribly. So go forward. All right. But what the fuck am I? Come on, stop. And then he grabs all this shit. Stop grabbing stuff. 
part of the problem is in your normal sit position, when you're holding a controller, your arms are relatively close together and the Kinect freaks out over this. Instead, having your on-screen avatar raise his hand or, or start to do one of these jubbly maneuvers. Stop going back! What the fuck? Stop doing that! Stop! What the fuck? Stop grabbing shit! I'm not grabbing shit! Well, stop hitting buttons, dude. The fucking game wants to hit buttons. Oh, sure, there are times where you can get through a level with minimal problems with the Kinect. I improved my Kinect experience by getting rid of my couches completely, then using my big black computer chair. Oh wait, no, it didn't like that particular chair. I had to swap it out for my backup computer chair. It only liked that chair. If I sat in a chair in a singular room with nothing next to me, then it improved the Kinect's experience a little bit. When it works like that, you can see what they were going for. But slink back in your chair and you're screwed. Take heavy fire and have to do several things at once and you're screwed. Which happens all the time. And even if it did work, most missions are incredibly short. It's as if they knew the players would need these short ass missions during the connect play performance because if it lasted any longer, it, it would make them kill themselves or throw themselves out the window. It can't be that bad. Honey, can you hear me? Are you there? <laughs> that, that's why I think these missions are so short and, and hey, you did it. Oh, congratulations. But the problem with that is just when you start to get immersed, it, everything stops. The stop and start gameplay kills whatever atmosphere you were trying to do. Worse, these very specific simple objectives are sometimes not even laid out for you. They're, they're not clear on what it is you need to do. There's one mission where you're supposed to spot enemy units coming towards you. You get out of your mech, you look for them, right, with your binoculars. And the guys say, just give us the signal when you see them. Except for they don't tell you what the f signal is. So you're waving your hands in the air, you're saying, I see them, start the engines, and you're doing all sorts of maneuvers. But the game never tells you, not in the manual, not in the tutorial, not in the mission briefing, what the f signal is. It's only through replaying the mission a thousand times, doing a bunch of different things, dying over and over, that you realize you have to get back into your mech and punch the goddamn guy to get his attention to start the freaking engines. Sarge, what? All right, there, pallies. Let's do this. Gonna start the engine. Fuck. <laughs> You know, you know, there's a lot of other reviewers out there that say that uh, these, that they hated the story and characters. Well, I'm not one of them. I actually thought the story and characters were interesting. You play as Lieutenant Powers, a war hero who comes back into service after the United States is invaded by an alternate reality United Nations. This United Nations is made up of primarily Asian countries because after the big data side when all technology, pretty much advanced technology, was wiped out, that's when these Asian countries decided to make one big land grab. I like the theme here, I like the styles, the aesthetics. It looks like World War II, an alternate version of it using mechs. There are tons of cinematics, there are slideshows, there's exposition before and after every single mission help driving the story along.
And if there's one thing the game does undeniably well is make you feel as if you are inside a massive vertical tank. Inside your cockpit there are all manners of gadgets and doohickeys, all 40 style. It is cramped as hell and there's only a tiny viewport unless you move up to look out the viewport or pull down the periscope. You feel like you're in a submarine and when I was a kid I always wanted a, a, a submarine game where you would see progressive damage and water would come in and you get to see that in this tank. Your tank takes damage, the viewpoint glass will crack, blood will splatter all over the place and, and shit will get messed up. There's even holes in your mech. Christ, are you fucking kidding me? Like I need a goddamn portal. The game also does a really good job of making you feel connected to your crew. They're vocal, perhaps a little too vocal during battle. Not quite Dragon's Dogma levels. And yes, the four initial crewmates are kind of walking, talking stereotypes, but that doesn't make them any less funny or likable. At least if you're not a stick in the mud and you're actually trying to enjoy the game, which I tried. There are moments where they freak out and you have to calm them down or you celebrate by giving them a fist bump or something after you do something good. You feel the emotion when your crew member who's stuck in this tight cramped spot is being attacked by somebody who opened your hatch or is reaching through a hole in your mech trying to stab her and kill her and you have to help her. Thanks, Sergeant. Moments like these felt like we were in a war. It was visceral, it was mature, and, and sometimes it was shocking. Sometimes throughout the mission if you take too much damage or a stray piece of shrapnel will come by it will hit one of your crew members and they will die permanently in the game there's no restart there's no redo that level that guy's dead for good in your platoon <laughs> and you'll hate losing them, unless they were annoying as shit, and in that case you want them to die to get their replacement. Because at the start of every new mission, they were replaced by a, a different platoon member. And this new person has their own quirks, their own personality. Do they crack under pressure easier? Do they load faster? They are even fully voiced and interact with the situations or interact with other specific characters that you have in your uh, cockpit. It made the game feel organic, fresh, like at any moment anybody could die and anything could happen. That would give it a ton of replayability to see all these different crew members, to either keep them alive or purposefully kill all them so you can get to some of the uh, more cooler guys later on who have their own funny things to say. Tons of replayability. If, you know, you actually wanted to replay it or could replay it without this amount of frustration. Just sit up! I don't blame From Software. Connect is absolutely brutal to develop for. And even though the end result was a disaster, there is real effort here, and you can see that hiding under the surface of all of its problems. 
They really wanted this game to work, and it probably worked so well on paper. Hell, the game even has an online mode, where you can team up with three other buddies and play a specific mission, sort of more like score attack, to see who can do the best in that particular mission. You're vying for the best score. There's even mech upgrades that you can customize your mech with. You unlock these parts and pieces by doing good in the individual campaign missions, earning an A, B, or C, unlocking a number of parts. But ultimately, none of that matters if you can't even control your game accurately, if the gameplay itself is fundamentally broken. The final verdict for Steel Battalion is a 2 out of 10. If this game worked perfectly, if it had used the controller or reworked the missions, the short missions to reflect that, it might have been able to score a 7 or 8. The potential was there, but the Kinect killed it, and the Kinect probably killed this franchise. And the only hope left now is that Capcom will issue some sort of DLC update that puts more functionality to the controller. It can be done as a sort of apology to, to the people that actually want to experience this game free from all the numerous problems and Kinect functionality, you know, shit that's in the game. The Kinect was supposed to make games better. Not worse, not more restrictive when people develop the game with the Kinect as a main feature in mind. The Kinect has been one huge fucking beta test with an inferior product and that everyone was duped for. And now we're gonna have Kinect 2 probably come out with the Xbox 720 or whatever it is and Microsoft is gonna hype the shit out of that as this one actually working. Wonderful. I cannot wait. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Play a real mech game, like the upcoming Mech Warrior Online or Hawken. Don't waste your time with this shit. Don't buy this shit. Period. Only on Connect for Xbox 360. <laughs>